States Radio with your hosts, Coco and Gregory, right here on LA Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another Glamour States Radio show. Woo, Together woo. with me, I, of course, I have Coco Selborne. Hello. And she will be my guest for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I have no choice. I will be her guest. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory Papuzian is here. <laughs> special guest. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I'm sorry. Special guest star. <laughs> guest star. <exactly. laughs> so That's hello right. everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Was oh. Are we going to glam it up today, baby? Oh, we always glam it up. <laughs> Why do you ask me? That's the question. We always glam it up. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> so, we had our coffee this week as well. No coffee? So we feel yeah, good. Yeah, okay, a lot of coffee. Our, our joy juice. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I taught you that phrase today, I think. Yes, <laughs> yes. Joy juice. <laughs> That's my joy juice. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> so, you want to call in 818-570-5085. We are here uh, for 50 more minutes. We can accept oh, your yeah. calls. And the first caller to call in gets what? W- what are you going to give today? <laughs> <laughs> Two cups of coffee, Two cups a cheeseburger, <laughs> and a message in a bottle. <laughs> oh, calls are coming in already. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we love about this show. We love our audience. You guys write us the funniest things. Those emails are hysterical. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) What you guys don't get told about on these shows is, well, kind of a lot. Our audience is awesome. I love our audience. We do. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And today, very interesting topic. I'm all loosened up now. (laughs) We're (laughs) We're going to talk about... All those brave people (gasps) that think they can sell their home themselves. They can. And it's the FISBO. The FISBO. The FISBO race. (laughs) (laughs) They are brave. I would call them the 300. The bravest. (laughs) The bravest, right. Well, they're not only 300. I wish they would, would, you know. Yeah, well, you know, for their own sake. (laughs) For their own sake. Like, you know, we're we're kidding completely. Unfortunately, there were way more people that they feel brave. And they don't want to list with an agent. They they're for sale by owners. We call them fizzbos. So that's the initials from the words. Yeah, for yeah. sale by owner. Yes, we love them. And uh, we're all kidding aside, guys. When we say that, you know, uh, Gregory's uh, kidding that. You know, being a fizzbo, that's not funny. Uh, that you're brave because that's the truth. You got to be really brave. I love the entrepreneurial perspective of a for sale by owner because dag damn it they are they are strong-willed people and i love that that's awesome Mm -hmm. uh one of the greatest things that i adore about for sale by owners is that they're willing to put themselves out there at least that's what it feels like in the beginning that's right they think they can do it and they can i mean i mean legally you you totally can be a for sale by owner that's not against the law. There are just a lot of, there are a lot of cons. The pros are that most majority of the time, Gregory, what's the main reason that you've come across that for sale by owners are save, doing this for themselves? Save the commission. That's the very first reason that somebody that, decides to put, them, put their home in the market themselves, save the commission. And we are going to drop all these myths today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, like, it's a myth. And then we're going to talk about the, the pros and cons of each one of these items. Listen, totally for sale by owner can completely save on commission to a degree. And it's not like it can't be done. For sale by owners, we're really doing much better in the marketplace when the market was a buyer's market. Mm-hmm. You know, there was it was just a little easier in some ways. Right. However, lots of things have changed and that's the number one reason number one reason is saving on commission and we can talk about that um there is uh, theoretically why people why people tend to be you know for sale by owners because theoretically they think they can save in commission how do you say theoretically in greek theoretica 
What? <laughs> you guys are cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you are cheating. You took the word and changed it. <laughs> well, uh, English is a crazy language anyway. I don't know how you guys do it. There, there, and that's there. That's why it's what? easy. <laughs> right. I know. That's why two, it's two, just, two. What? That's why it's kind of easy for us to, to learn uh, English because... Like twenty percent of English is is Greek words. So and if you're in the medical Greek community, Latin, it's you know? going to be about eighty percent. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> so for commissions, commissions is the number one. So theoretically, let me say let me say the the reasons why somebody would decide to uh, take on you know and their home and put it in the market themselves. You know, or can I just interrupt you for a moment? Sure. Oh, good, because I am anyway. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> First time you ever interrupt me has never happened to me That's before. It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the days when it was pen and Teller? <laughs> right. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> we used to go on the listing and said, Gregory was the analytical type, and he, would, he was always there with the punchline, and I was the one talking. I was obviously... <laughs> pen and he was teller and i was talking 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 setting up the entire situation and he would land like, the joke yes <laughs> <laughs> gregory did you agree with that yes <laughs> dramatic pause he does it ladies anyway and <laughs> so so the so reason why we're talking about this one is we talked about this week um what gregory is so humble about <laughs> Okay, so this guy's never going to talk or promote himself in things. Mm. So I am here as his special guest tonight mm -hmm. <laughs> to share with you how he is really out for the clients. And the reason why this subject came up, and he's been a little funny about it in the beginning, is for sale by owners, is because he literally respects for sale by owners above and beyond, probably even people just in general. He, he gets and understands the strength and the will behind or for sale by owners. So forgive our, our brevity and our, our jokes in the beginning. But the truth of the matter is unbelievable strength to be willing to put yourself in that position. And we're going to go over why. So Yeah, honestly, like if I wasn't in the, in the business, uh, if I wasn't an, an agent, because I have some entrepreneurial spirit, even though I would be doing something different and, uh, you know, I would. I would, I would for sure entertain the thought of, you know, putting my home in the market on my own and see what happens because, you know, that's, that's me. But now that I'm, that I'm uh, you know, on the business and I know the reasons why I shouldn't do that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this with you and I'm going to let everybody know why because it's a, it's a serious matter. Sure, I think that's part of the reason why I... It I, can cause a lot of problems and you can make way less money. Oof. That's the two, two most important reasons, you know, let alone marketing, let alone handling phone calls, oh let gosh. alone, the people you know, the door and the whole nonsense, yeah, yeah, let alone that. But the two main reasons are <coughs> that for sure getting um, less money, for sure uh, the sales, the sale takes more time and the liability. Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely. <coughs> so, and these are the I was going to say before you interrupt me. <laughs> now Watch I'm, I'm interrupting you. Again. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to say the reasons why for sale by owners are becoming for sale by owners. What, what, are, what are they thinking? Well, what, what they're thinking is that they can save money on commissions. They can sell their home quickly. Uh, they, they, they can, they want to keep, uh, you know, the sale process in their control. Uh, and, you know, they want to, basically that's it. Yeah, these, well, these three reasons. Absolutely. And, and that they can do their marketing and they don't need to pay anyone because they got it all, you know, oh, they know they know this person, that sure. person's going to help them and market it and, you know, take some pictures with the grandmother in the middle of the picture <laughs> and stuff like that and this is okay. And they're going to put it on Zillow, you know, it's free, I'm going to put my email, my contact from it. Uh, you know the buyer is going to call me and it's going to be done you know why do i even wh why do i even need those agents uh, listen uh, great points and a lot of times what i've come across in the years that i've been in the business having the same feeling of being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um what i've come across is most of the time for sale by owners have also had some interactions with agents and for some weird reason okay i'm being completely sarcastic mm -hmm. They've had a terrible experience. Unfortunately, in our industry, the the going feeling in general about 
agents is that they're seen at the same level and no disrespect to those other sales reps of used car salesmen. They're considered the same category and are not looked upon well or respected. Right. So they've had terrible experiences. They feel like they've had poor representation and it's very possible. At the middle of the crash, we're in millions <coughs> of agents in this country. Millions. Millions. Okay, there's not nearly, there's, we're less, I believe, than 700,000 at this point in the whole country. We've lost country. a lot of them. And with likely good reason, no offense to them, but it wasn't being taken as professionally as it likely should have been. And a lot of people were doing it part-time. They didn't realize the cost, and they didn't realize what they were doing. And in all fairness to those agents who were out there and have done the best that they can, listen, as an agent, it is not easy to get a good education in this industry. Mm -hmm. You have to go through and earn your stripes every single step of the way. And most people are not willing to share information about yep. how to get transactions completed or how to be good at what people no, need. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to teach you unless you pay them well in this industry. You know, it's like and most people don't plan enough knowing that that's going to be a cost they have to encompass during the process. So unfortunately, that that happens a lot. So I, w I would add to your group is that for sale by owners have been hurt or feel that there is not a need for an agent. For sure, I mean it's a profession. In, in every profession, there is pro there is uh, you know pros and there is people that are you know are are not so are not so good on the what they're doing in every profession. Uh, but uh, it, the same thing happens in, in real estate as well. You might have a lawyer, you know, that is not so good or so aggressive or so strong you know it's it happens it everybody. happens so so people have and again we go back to being brave absolutely why not think that you can do this so let's talk about some of those things so we know that they're brave and smart and interested in getting a great value <coughs> on their home mm -hmm. and we get that so what statistically you brought that up just a moment ago was that the truth is 99 percent of the time People selling their homes get a price based on something that is nothing to do with the true numbers of the market. So lots of reasons why. Uh, th they could get that off of a website. <clears throat> they have a number in their head or they, they have decided for what reason they've invested things into their home that that's suddenly the price that the home is valued at. Right. And that's not actually how a price is determined. So what will happen is a home will go on the market at a particular price. Generally, it's the wrong number, mm -hmm. either way too high or way too low, not really consistent with what the market is. And if it's what if it happens, if it's too, too low, people still come in. I'm telling you, I see it left and right all the time. And I speak to these incredible people that the agent that is trying to come in with the buyer will still lowball them on yeah, a price. L last week, actually. Uh, you know, we came across someone who was uh, for sale by owner was selling his uh, home uh, himself. He had put in the market at least two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars less than the price he should be getting, and he already have a couple of offers that were that was less than the price he put in the market. Correct, and that's that we see is because. They're not necessarily kept up to date with what's happening in the market. And in this particular case, they had previously been represented by an agent, in my humble opinion, didn't right. seem to do a very aggressive job of marketing that property. And they were hurt and they were like, oh, you know, he didn't do anything. I can for sure do something. So if I do something, it's more than nothing. So And why should I pay somebody therefore, to do that? Therefore, exactly. The, and they're, they're likely correct. I, uh, what my analysis of that particular situation was, listen, the agent blew it. They didn't market it aggressively. There's no reason in this day and age, in this market, where this property is located and what it was for an investment that it shouldn't have sold. Exactly. None. N unless there's, you know, there was a <laughs> nuclear waste truck out in the, in the driveway all day long parked there that said, don't buy this property. Even still, people would still make you an offer. So it seemed that that was a very low priced and they were trying to sell it themselves. And in addition to that, Gregory, wasn't this the same one that was um, 
also in the MLS. Oh, right, right, right. right. That was, uh, it was put somehow on the MLS as a for sale by oh, other, yeah. but, you know, he put it on the MLS somehow and burned, that was the, one burned, they burned the spot. Burned two spots, actually. Yeah, burned two spots. Not only had to, had they paid, they what they did is they paid a service to put it on the MLS. Yeah. These services charge you 500 whatever they charge you anyway. They're just charging you the anyway MLS, yeah. just to put it on the MLS. Now, the MLS... No, no, they don't offer representation. Just right, to just, to, just to place it on there. Well, okay, that's good and bad. Okay, the good part is it's in the system. The bad part is it was in the system twice with two different prices that made no sense. Mm -hmm. And... They, they paid twice, plus it was the wrong price. So here's the bad part. Let's say you've now decided, okay, this isn't working. Let's just say that you're them. <coughs> this isn't working, and we'll go through all the reasons why it could and it can work. It can totally work. And also the things to know that it, that can be a complication. When it doesn't work and you want to go back on the MLS with an agent who's going to actually advertise it and, and market ag aggressively, now they go back to put it in the system and it's like you said they burn their spot because it's already in the system and it won't show if you try to put it on with a new price that's accurate that new price is going to look funny to a buyer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're going to be like i don't understand why they change their price what yeah. are these guys crazy it, it doesn't show up like they 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 just uh, put it on the market it shows up that it was on the market and the price was raised and so People who see that, they're like, you know, why would why would they raise the price all of a sudden? Well, but they don't know that it was for sale by owner before and it was a wrong, you know. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> to an agent, they will understand that. An educated agent in the area will understand how you've gotten to that number. And that won't be a problem for the right buyer. But with the information available as much as it is, it's uneducated information. And it, in this case, it wouldn't help. <clears throat> Excuse me, they want to cough on everyone. Huh. <laughs> so in this case, it's to the detriment mm -hmm. to have had it on the MLS um, in that case. And hey, let's face it, we talked about commissions. Most of the time, you're paying a commission to the buyer's agent anyway when they come. You're like, oh, I'll work with a buyer's agent. Yeah, everybody says, oh, I work with a buyer's agent. So there it goes, 2.5%. At least. <clears throat> and sometimes it's three. Plus, you're going to not have any representation of yourself and why would you do the paperwork on your own and having to face a, a you know an agent who is more skilled than you on negotiating and on writing contracts and on you know this making is, the transaction and their job is to get the buyer best representation e exactly not you so you're going to be negotiating with somebody who knows who does this for a living uh without information that you need and you don't have the information and you maybe don't uh, maybe you won't be able to give back, you know, documents on time, or you don't know what this means. The other thing that, you know, we talked uh, on on another uh, previous um, show, we talked about the offer and the contracts and how many pages it is, and you know, we broke down the process and all that. Like it's all sixteen these, pages from the all buyer. these to do it by your by your own, and at the end having to face the liability. Oh, you know, we want yeah, we don't want to get to the liability yet. But yeah, that's why we take licenses from the state and we have to renew and we have to stay on top of it. And at the same time, every day, every single day, we keep learning and learning and learning on our own. Things yeah. are changing all the time. The contracts are changing again uh, in a couple of months. So, <coughs> so much to know all the time. And, the, and yeah. those self-help centers, absolutely, they will give you some sets of papers that can help you sell your property. That's accurate. However most buyers coming in are not going to feel comfortable buying from somebody who's not willing to have representation for themselves you you look weak already oh you look you look weak and I, not because you are but because that's the the way it's perceived mm -hmm. and they buyer's agent is going to come in that's their job is to give the buyer the best deal of course they're going to tell you whatever they want to tell you they work for the client so they, don't they work want for their you. client to have their best deal and they're going to tell you oh i can do it i'll do i'll do it for you know i'll do it for three percent i'll do it for four percent whatever but they're not representing you during the process right. and the reality is if you're already listed at low and you're getting less and no representation did you really 
save on the commission in the end? And more likely you have it a long, a long time on the market and you're fed up and you're like, ah, I want it out of the way. You oh, know? Yeah, I want to move on in my that. life. Just, you know, I want it out of my life. You Just want that emotion. Sell whatever. Anymore. I'll make 50K less. You know, I don't mind. <laughs> because at the end, that's what you do. Absolutely. You give up. <laughs> yeah. And part of that, you know, you got buyers coming in. They don't <laughs> listen. They're in for a deal. And if you don't know what's supposed to be on the market, plus there's disclosures, gosh forbid, holy smokes, you go through the process, you get what you think you need all set up, not to mention the time and energy and money you've already spent to get those things together, to do your research, to put that all on the line and figure it out and then go, okay, great, we're opening escrow, we have an agreement that likely, I'm telling you, this is a, this is a fact across the country. You will get far less as a for sale by owner than you would with representation. Even with not so hot representation, <laughs> exactly. okay? <clears throat> it's just, that's how it turns out. Just a part of what we're educated to do. Bottom line is this, you wouldn't perform your own surgery. You wouldn't fix your own car. You know, you wouldn't. You would fix my own car. I'm gonna fix my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there is a screw loose. But, know, yeah. but you know. <laughs> You don't even change your, the oils yourself, <laughs> which is something simple. But I'm saying. I'm not doing that so <laughs> why would you sell? Why would you sell your own home, your biggest investment, your own money? You know, why would you play with that? Why would you sell yourself? Why would you make less? Even if you knew how to do it. <clears throat> for two, for two point five percent. I mean. Yeah. Some of the other things you have to understand too is that at the during this process, let's say, let's take a scenario. Good old scenario. Why a scenario? Let's bring it back into the room. Anyway, scenario, we've got this scenario where a client is, or sorry, you're having a transaction, you're selling your property. What is this your prime residence? You need to be advised about what's available to you, what you need to know, what's next, and know that you're being taken through a process well. And right. you don't want to be guessing and how, oh, oh, don't <clears throat> worry, we'll give you the disclosures. Okay, disclosures, what if you don't fill them out right? No one is going to tell you to do them correctly. No one is going to advise you yourself on how to do it so you're out of liability. And they're happy if you don't. Absolutely, because if they close that deal <coughs> and you did it wrong, guess who's going to win anything in a lawsuit? In California, where everybody is so happy, everybody's suing everybody for nothing, uh -huh. for little things. I, you know, I, I stubbed my toe in my own house. I'm going to sue my home and insur homeowner's insurance. But, uh, but. Okay, listen, ridiculous things happen. That's why these documents are so big. We want to keep you out of the liability loop. And the truth of the matter is a buyer, as soon as they're done with the transaction, all they have to do is file a suit against you. And since you represented yourself, guess who's on the hook no matter what? The judge is going, anyone through the process. And the fact that you have to be even brought through that process mm -hmm. is horrible. And that's going to waste even more money, more time. And likely you're going to settle just to get them off your case anyway. Oh, you didn't tell us that in uh, 1842 there was this, uh, you know, soil issue in L.A. Mm. Well, exactly. yeah. Uh, why would? Yeah. So things come up. And as ridiculous as it sounds, it happens all the time. Buyers don't mean anything by it. Most of the time they come in and they go, okay, you know, no problem. This should be fine. That's great. <laughs> But they want the deal. So let's break down those myths one by one. Let's do it. Like save money on commission. Why they don't? Why for sale by owners do not actually save money? They don't save money because number one, you're likely going to pay a buyer's agent at least two and a half percent. That's the minimum any agent should be doing this for. Likely it's going to be three percent. Well, three percent. If you're going to sell your home anyway, for another 2%, you get yourself represented and you don't have to do anything like, for example, advertising, marketing your home. Okay, I'll put it on Craigslist. No, 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 nobody cares. Right. Okay, it's, most things on Craigslist are seen as, as nonsense. You can do it for sale by owner. Okay, most people don't go there and aren't looking. Okay, you can put it on the other bigger websites. Okay, but then you have to start taking the phone calls. Most of the time for sale by owners are unavailable by phone or email most of the time because you're working you have a job you have things that you're doing all the time part of the reason you hire someone is so that you are out of the loop exactly and you are not having to field phone calls <coughs> listen 
we get people interested in buying homes at crazy hours. They will call you. I've had calls at 2 o'clock in the morning come through my system. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm watching. I'm, I'm seeing this home in Zillow right now. Can you tell me when can I see it? When can I see it? I love it. I love it. It's my dream home. Listen, it's 2 a.m. Get off my phone. <laughs> it's happened. So, what will initially happen is for a for sale by owner is they have great intentions, great energy, very excited, fully feel informed. They'll start taking phone calls. Guess who's normally calling a for sale by owner? Guess who's the first phone calls you're getting? Brokers. <sighs> Those agents, right. they're calling all the time. Oh, why did you decide to sell? Because that's what they do. Like you know, it's that one, one source of us to get business. Because statistically, the numbers are saying that ninety percent of the people who are trying to sell their home themselves initially, they end up giving the listing to uh, to an agent, and we know that. And you know, there's a lot of people who are going after for sale by owners because at the end the seller is gonna get it and gonna give it to somebody who really can do it because they can't handle the phone calls, they can you know, proceed the transaction, this, that, the other thing. Right, and they usually are bombarded with agents for the first week or two, and by then, you get calls day, night, emails, contacts, crazy conversations that happen, you don't know who to trust, and these poor people are literally overwhelmed with calls. And then when a real buyer calls, you're already fed up and you're like, oh, I don't even know if you want to buy my home, this, that. and you're I'm like not working with an agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And likely that first phone call, that first representation of your home is the best one anyone will ever have about your home. That first call is your first impression. You want to sound happy and chipper and excited. And a great agent is going to be overwhelmingly mm -hmm. happy to discuss exactly. your home and the great attributes of that home because they care about you and you getting the best deal. That's why. <coughs> the other reason that um, uh, that uh, for sale by owners can save money in commission, the reason that it, it is a myth, another one reason is that uh, they don't create competition. They don't have the ability to create competition because right. they don't have, they cannot put it on the MLS, which is the least, but- right, Or even if they do. Even if they do, you know, it doesn't that's mean- That's not that enough. That's not enough. Also, at least we do as Glam Estates, <laughs> you know- Who we, is it again? We advertise, we advertise, we advertise in uh, <laughs> luxury magazines, we advertise in uh, the New, New York, uh, uh, New, York New York Times, Times, Jet Set Magazine, Wall Street, Wall Street Journal. We have a global exposure, and it, the average agent is barely doing Asia, that. We advertise in Asia, we advertise in Europe. Barely doing the local. So we bring competition, and we bring multiple offers always. And the way we market, and the way we do our open houses, these, you know, everything we do is very effective because we don't put our name in something that is not going to sell in a, in a month or two, you know, or less. So, you know. We want happy clients and we want to put our names. Yes. We don't like having something on the MLS that's there for six months on, or a year. So we advise and we educate our clients well. They know what we're doing. You know, we let them know what we're doing and how we're going to market it. And it's very effective. I mean, I I we can't go wrong with that. And it's a formula that we have and we use and we bring results all the time. We keep our promises. That's so nice. <laughs> I mean, mm. that's what happens. <laughs> mm, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, but for sale by owners, traditionally, are on the market for six months, a year, even in a hot market. Because, like I said, the beginning is one thing, but then they get worn down. Listen, it's understandable. That's what happened. That's why we lost so many agents too. You, let's be real. It's not an easy job once you get started and rolling into it. And. Taking the phone calls, the emails, the questions that are monotonous. And you know, you can have people standing in your home and and there's security involved too. Oh my gosh. You have oh people yeah. coming, you gotta run your open, own open house. That means you've gotta be there during that time. Or what if you're not gonna do an open house? Uh, that's even worse. A and you know what's also bad on that? That buyers don't feel comfortable when the seller is there. They feel uncomfortable. They don't spend time on ho on the house, you know, because they're like, oh, I don't want to open his drawer. You know, I don't want to open his Can closet. Open the closet? Right. Yeah. They, they feel uncomfortable and they don't feel well. If you don't feel well, you're not going to buy the home. And it, it won't likely not occur to a for sale by owner yeah. to look at the home from the perspective of a buyer. It's really tough to have a, a, a third-party perspective on your home, uh, let alone ourselves, you know, 
we feel comfortable, we do our thing our way, you know, sometimes don't even realize that most of the time, and I, I see, gosh, I even see some agents do this. Please, please, please don't let your agent let you run your own open house, even if you have that, okay? Please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I can name every single time I've gone to a for sale by owner, the home is stuffy, there's no lights on, and it's dark. They don't want to open things up. They're like, oh, well, with an offer, I'll show you the closet. <laughs> Come on. Right. Come on, guys. And it's tough. And you, you really, for yourself, it's not because someone wants to argue with you as a for sale by owner. But the reality is they're trying to build competition for you to get multiple offers. That's the most important part. You want people to start bidding at your house. Oof. And you're not going to be able to achieve that by... Uh, you know, by inviting your neighbors to come take a look at your house and you think you have a successful open house because all your neighbors came and, and, and admired your home or they talked bad about your home. That's you know? even worse, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's not a successful open house. Successful open house is, you, you know, people come from all over the place, the real people, the real buyers that are being waiting for your home because you have marketed right and the price is right and everything. And also to have like international exposure, have a video of your home, send it to China, to Chinese buyers who want to come invest or relocate here. That's a successful marketing and open house and, comp you know, competitive, you know, bring competition. You got to get an agent who's really on top of things. The, the reality of the situation is all this money and advertising you you would have to put forward. Mm -hmm. That's honestly, that's part of what the commissions pay for. Exactly. And you're paying for it anyway. By the time you add in the cost, let's say you want flyers. Okay, who's going to create flyers? Are you going to get them off the website and create them yourselves? I mean, you can, but that's going to be a couple of hours at least. Then you've got to pay for it to get printed. Then you got to pick it up. Then you have to have enough available. You have to have your phone number on there all the time. Now, here's a complication you can think about. So now you have this, this property. Let's say you get an offer. You, you're have chosen to pay the buyer's agent a commission but not for yourself and they're still negotiating back and forth what happens in week two you're into the deal and they're negotiated a price with you which is going to be for sure lower lower than though you <coughs> listed it for okay for sure now they've got you uh sort of under a barrel you're thinking you're moving you're asking the agent what's next they're not going they're not there to help you they're help, there to help the buyer mm -hmm. they're getting paid either way so their thinking is whatever you might get a, an agent here and there maybe who'll be a little bit nicer to you but that's likely not going to happen let's just don't don't guarantee that's going to take place so now let's say if a buyer's agent wanted to be really savvy they come in and they say okay great now we need to do a home inspection mm -hmm. home inspection is going to be needing a hundred of these we need you know this needs a new light we need a light bulb we need a new gas filter we need a new this there's a new roof that needs to go on the way that it's represented can look like there is a requirement for a seller to do things and some things will be but if you're not advised well how will you know this exactly how will you know and then this the seller is in this position we've seen it happen and the buyer's agent suddenly says, oh, yeah, my client needs a $10,000 uh, yeah. credit in order to close. Oh, my gosh, because there's so many repairs to do. Now you've lost money again. Yeah, because what are you going to do? Are you going to back out for $10,000? You're about to close the deal and you're going to back out for $10,000, which you could have paid in, in commission and you would be represented and you wouldn't have these problems because their agent would go back and be like, listen, I have three other buyers waiting. I have three other offers as a backup right now because I have created the competition that I was talking about before. So we don't give you 10,000. So you want to close, close. You don't I have another buyer in line. And how do you know when your, your rights are? You have to know when your disclosure contingency periods are coming up, mm. meaning you, you need to be able to advise yourself and know when you can say to the buyer's agent hey hey time's up you guys you need to remove your contingency and they'll go back to the but listen closet. though if they look at our our previous shows then they would know how to do that <laughs> it's so strange <laughs>
we were just at that same moment together. So in other words, if you if you if you still feel brave to be be a for sale by owner, at least what's our previous show? Yeah, do your, <laughs> get educated about it totally, and you can do it. Uh, so, <clears throat> so knowing that, so you could be in this predicament and not know what your rights are. My goodness, please, please, please know what your rights are, and they're not easy to always keep. You, and then let's say the buyer's agent, you can't get a hold of them. How do you enforce your rights? Good question. And what happens? This will happen too. I've seen this happen before. Guys, okay, uh, I've seen this happen before. And I have seen happen, not well, in the transaction I was doing, I have seen this happen though. This is something we talked about at the board meetings when we were on mm -hmm. the leadership council. Um, there was a seller who was for, for sale by owner and an agent had gone in as a buyer's agent with a cash buyer on a property. The for sale by owner had really no clue what the real value of the home was. So the cash buyer came in and said, okay, great, no problem. I'll buy it at your price as long as I get an appraisal first. And whatever the appraisal is, I will buy it at whatever the appraisal says. Mm -hmm. They're like, that sounds fair, absolutely. But the seller didn't know that there are different kinds of appraisals. And the appraisal that they had done was a land value only mm -hmm. appraisal. <laughs> awful it literally got completely ripped off completely horrible i believe that agent um was reprimanded but it took a long time to get a hold of them and get that squared away and the but the seller never knew so the seller sold his property only for land value right wow terrible and they did the, and the agent on the other side did that with a straight face now how are you going to know that I was happy to be part of the pursuit of that agent. I was that was fun, mm. but that's only the ones we know about. No, not there's. Listen, most people are not going to get involved. Uh, is that law enforcement right. background in me, huh? I turn into a cop when it's those things. Oh, we're gonna <laughs> get them. We're gonna get them. <laughs> but what? What? I mean, what can you do after that? I mean, there's, it's only the a contracts hope. are signed. The seller agreed. Exactly. So you, there's lots of ways that it can turn ugly during the process. So. It's important to know that. And plus, there's a, a another few things to know. Some people are under the belief that, you know, there's understanding like, hey, I'm selling my house and, you know, I'm going to hit capital gains tax if I don't sell it for this price or I do sell it for this price. Right. There's lots of rules to know and knowing it versus hearing it on the Internet. As we know, remember that commercial that was out that said everything on the Internet is always true? <laughs> No, I, I haven't Okay, seen there was a commercial. It was a great commercial. Because everything <laughs> that's said on the internet is true. <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. Anyway, I mean, that's not to say that there aren't true elements to it. And uh, listen, not trying to discourage people or to put anybody down. It's, it's quite the opposite. I actually hate to see people lose money. And especially on their biggest property they're likely going to own is their primary residence. That's your primary residence is everything. The biggest purchase. About yeah. So be careful knowing that you're, you're what you're paying for and what you're not paying for, what you believe that you're not paying for is advertising or, you know, marketing. All these things, that literally that same property we were talking about, the for sale by owner, my goodness gracious, all the different things that they had, that they had done themselves that took away from their job, their regular day-to-day -day life, right? And you're gonna have people knocking on the door in the middle of the night, hey, hey man, um, will you do uh, like a um, lease with an option to buy if I buy it for like 50 bucks? You know, you're gonna have crazy people who mean well. They have crazy offers though. And what usually happens is the seller gets exacerbated. Right. And is like, give me a break. I can't stand this process. I'm irritated. I need a break. I need a break. They also think, Coco, that they can sell their home faster. Yeah. <laughs> than an agent would. Like, well, no depending worry, on I the agent. It. Depending on the agent well. they previously had experience with, that could be the case. If it's priced wrong, and what we say is it's only worth as much as the market is willing to bear. That's the only thing. If someone's willing to come in and pay extra, your, your house better have like a circus going on in the background. Right. Whatever's happening is something really particularly quite different mm -hmm. to pay you know a different a, a hugely different price but it, it's good to know not to mention oh, what i was going to ask you about too is um 
what have you seen happen when when there's an open house and a buyer comes in and the agent shows up what do we see happen we see we have seen that happen when we're doing previewing of homes or we're doing this and it's for even if it's for sale by owner or the owner is present mm -hmm. if an owner is present during an open house at all it's really a negative it is yeah. not just for the buyer but for the seller and the reason is frequently like all the time this is the buyer's one opportunity to get in with you they're like great yeah. okay yeah let's start negotiating negotiating yeah you're gonna bring down the price what if i do this what if i do that what if you don't know what your rights are what if you don't know how to respond you know how, yeah. a strong front you need a strong front you need someone out there who's in standing in front and saying listen submit your offer in writing and we'll talk about it yeah that you need that and not to be available is the best way to protect yourself. And you, you can't do that if you're for sale by owner. You don't talk price with anyone unless they submit an offer. Like anybody can come in and say this and that and the other thing, but you have to have it in writing in order to start negotiating. And what are you negotiating on? On thin air? I mean, <laughs> absolutely. if you don't have it in writing, what's the point? And how do you know what the forms are done correctly? And you're having someone check the forms. If they're not getting a commission, honest to goodness, What's the liability of them if they have it wrong? Yep, that looks good. Sounds good to me. Okay. But yeah. it usually in a negotiation, it becomes emotion because someone may legitimately say, listen, the roof has a hole in it, you know, but as a seller, you may be offended in the way it's done. They, people don't mean to, or maybe they do mean to. They mm -hmm. get you emotional. They get you into an emotional state so that you'll agree to whatever they're in the need for. Mm -hmm. So... All in all, it's a, it's a tough spot to be in. So, it is. It I'm is. telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And price, you need somebody who, who knows how to assess, you know, previous sales in the neighborhood, and uh, see, and has the ability to know if your home is better or worse than the other homes and evaluate it. You can't just come up with a price because the home down the street that you saw it was sold last month and you saw it in the open house you think that it's <coughs> that was uh worse than yours and so you should raise the price just because of that or the opposite we don't come up with prices just because of that no so so get some some real input with somebody work with the with someone who's going to give you solid information we always make sure we walk through the steps and if you are thinking of doing for sale by owner get drop us an email at glam at glamestates.com and we will give you a synopsis of the pros and cons as well mm -hmm. and also some alternatives exactly so you, at least you have some options before you decide to do that oh and one other thing I was going to mention is that sometimes we'll come across for sale by owners who will say hey you know I'm not paying anybody I don't work with any agents whatsoever guarantee you for sure they they're going yeah. to lose money and 90% of them they finally work with an agent because they see they can handle or they don't sell or yeah or it goes they don't to sell something again. happens and it's become difficult listen at least get to know a couple of agents you feel good with call call us we'll be happy to at least give you some input on what to do uh, what's the number for you gregory five six two yeah five three seven uh -huh. two five nine five i like that that's a good number and yours three two three uh -huh. four two five uh-huh Nine four eight four. Thanks. Right? Oh, okay. you rock. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what a great guest star you've been. I mean, I've been. I mean, you've been when I've been. What? <laughs> no, for sale by owners, I love the, the the braveness, but I highly advise you to not do your own brain surgery. Listen, you're an expert at what you do in your world, and it's not that you're not capable of doing it. It has nothing to do with capability. It has to do with the liability in the end and what's the cost for not having the great representation <laughs> you know also people think you know oh they make too much money they do this but they don't think that in order for us to be successful and to be in the business and to continue you know being there we have expenses not only our own expenses in order to be you know active agents but we also in order to sell more homes we invest more in the homes that we take for listings like we take a list we spend our own money before the home sells absolutely I mean, there's no guarantee that it's going to sell but we put depending our investment on the into house it. 
we spend from three to ten thousand dollars or sometimes more you know creating videos uh, marketing materials uh, you know uploading in different sites that we have membership you know subs- that's w- right we you know china here there uh magazines uh, newspapers Russia. all this is yeah france exactly europe yeah all this is all, Bonjour, this, france. all this is money that we front you know before we before we get paid and and that's because we believe in what you're doing we believe in it enough to support you and we we want you to be successful of course that's the whole idea is to bring you the best return and of course that's why we are successful and we keep afloat and we are ahead of our competition because we do all this but you know it costs us it costs everybody and it's not that we make twenty thousand dollars and we you know put put them on on our pocket and no 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 and even if you were to see that number that's just most people don't realize that that number is the general number that goes to a brokerage yeah. firm. They're, the split to an agent is very <coughs> low generally. We split very with low. The broker. And they're not going to pay for any of the marketing. We split with a broker. We pay our and taxes. that's the general <laughs> thing. Taxes, insurance. In order to not to be in jail and be out here doing yeah. business. <laughs> and we also pay up front for advertising. Yes. And there's lots of places. And a good agent is going to have... A great agent is going to have expenses up front that they consistently pay into so that your home gets the best exposure and creates what? <coughs> competition. Competition is very important. You want competition. You want competition. You want people to be multiple offers. Huh? Over the list price. Hey, that's what you're looking for. So you can go on to your next step. So exactly. Go and enjoy your vacation. Leave your listing in the keys with your agent and get on with going. That's what we do. Hey, you're going. Hey, we got the keys. Great. We're on. Go to go on vacation. We got it covered. We'll see you. And have a mindset that you are moving. Forget about the home. You're yeah. moving. Yeah, you're, it's time for you to get to your next step, and you don't need to be exhausted or exacerbated through it in order to get there. So, you don't need to. You don't need to waste your lunch breaks, you know, talking to buyers or brokers or whoever <laughs> is calling you, you know. We do that hey for man, you. Hey, man, does this house have walls? <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> it does. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, guys, uh, if you have any questions, please visit us at glamestates.com. Share or this with your friends. If you know anyone who's thinking of buying or selling, please show us as a resource. That's what we're here for. This is not meant to be a secret. This is absolutely free information and everyone should be able to call us this show is here to educate and give advice to people so because we're happy to do it because we're gonna glam glam it it up up, baby baby. (laughs) (laughs) bye-bye everyone bye you're listening to glam estates radio with your hosts coco and gregory right here on la talk radio